Obscure City is a place where you can find many unique dangers. This is where she works. Cassandra Kiltoy, Paranormal Private Eye. Now a teenage girl's father has gone missing, and Killjoy believes that the city's enigmatic protector, the Swordsman, is the key to finding him. So Killjoy must face many deadly dangers in her search for the Swordsman. Available on Amazon.com. Did you know that originally Marvel Studios had a completely different title, villain, and premise planned for Avengers 5? Until Kevin Feige announced at San Diego Comic Con 2024 that the title of the movie would be Avengers Doomsday, the villain would be Doctor Doom, and that said villain would be played by Robert Downey Jr. So that means that the original version of Avengers 5 has faded away into nothing more than one of the legends of Phantom. <music> Greetings fanboys and fangirls, I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster and our story begins in 2019. Avengers Endgame was the highest grossing movie of the year, and rumors of a Disney streaming platform that would include original Marvel content were in the air. It was at this point that Feige and crew were planning the next saga of the MCU. Some of the details had already been decided, like the saga focusing on the multiverse, something they had lightly established in Spider-Man Far From Home. That the saga would end with an adaptation of 2015's Secret Wars, which unified multiple versions of the Marvel Universe into one, and that the facets of the multiverse would be established through their next three installments. Specifically, how to create a new universe or reality in one division, bringing beings from other universes into the MCU in Spider-Man No Way Home, and physically traveling to other universes in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. But there was one really important detail that was yet to be ironed out. Who was going to be the big bad for this saga? A few names were tossed around like the Beyonder, Molecule Man, Doctor Doom, and everyone's favorite red herring, Mephisto. But all that workshopping ended during the production of Loki Season 1, when everyone saw Jonathan Major's amazing performance as He Who Remains, a variant of Kang the Conqueror. Now, for those of you who don't know, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Kang is an all-powerful dictator who rules the world in the future, something that he achieved via time travel, gathering advanced weapons, manipulating the timeline, and using knowledge of future events to his favor. While Kang's first official appearance as the Conqueror was in Avengers No. 8 in 1964, it's been retroactively revealed that time variants of Kang appeared in several comics before that one, meaning that Kang has been there almost from the beginning of the Marvel Universe as we know it. So yes, Kang is a time travel villain, so it made all the sense in the world to use him as the main antagonist in a time travel show like Loki. And originally, that was the character's only function in the MCU, which is evident in all the exposition that He Who Remains lays out at the end of Loki Season 1. That basically, if you kill him, there would be no one to maintain the sacred timeline, and Kang the Conqueror returns. So yes, originally we were only supposed to see Kang the Conqueror in Loki Season 2, but then plans shifted, he was made the big bad for the entire saga, and Avengers 5 became Avengers the Kang Dynasty. And now, for the question you've all been waiting for. What would Avengers the Kang Dynasty be like? Well, thanks to a leak on Twitter and a few corresponding articles, we have a pretty good idea. The movie would have been similar in structure to Avengers Infinity War, seeing different groups of heroes trying to stop a major catastrophe only to fail. A failure that would then be resolved and redeemed in the next movie, Avengers Secret Wars. In the Kang Dynasty, the Conqueror would have torn a page out of He Who Remains' playbook. But instead of manipulating the timeline to keep his evil variants at bay, Kang would manipulate the multiverse to create a new universe in which he is the sole ruler. Only a handful of MCU heroes would become aware of this and try to stop him. Namely, the ones who are aware of the multiverse and Kang, like Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, Spider-Man, and Photon, who would start the movie in the Fox X-Men universe, which is where we last saw her at the end of the Marvels. There, she would actually witness that universe be destroyed by Kang, and she would go on to warn the other heroes. A recent article revealed that Shang-Chi was supposed to be among the small group of heroes that tries to stop Kang. This is supported by the fact that Shang-Chi director, Destin Daniel Cretton, was the original choice to direct the Kang Dynasty. 
which makes perfect sense that he would want his titular character to be the audience surrogate, which is basically how the Russos used Captain America in Infinity War and Endgame, as the audience sees the majority of those movies from Captain America's point of view. So yes, the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars were supposed to be told from Shang-Chi's perspective, the new guy experiencing all of this multiversal insanity for the first time. Unfortunately, Destin Daniel Creighton dropped out of the project to focus on Shang-Chi too, and Shang-Chi's role, if any, in Avengers Doomsday is yet to be determined. The question is, how exactly is Kang manipulating the multiverse, destroying universes, and crafting his own universe? Apparently, he achieves this by killing off or removing anchor beings from their respective universes, a major plot point in Deadpool and Wolverine, where we learn that if a universe loses their anchor being, that universe will unravel and die. This would have led to a few anchor beings joining the MCU heroes on their battle against Kang. Some of these anchor beings are rumored to have been the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Wolverine, Blade, Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider, and the Fantastic Four from the upcoming movie, whose retro-futuristic universe would have been one of the many that Kang destroyed. There's also a rumor that the reason Kang is not targeting the MCU is because that universe is already collapsing as it has already lost its anchor being, Iron Man. Now that would have been an awesome twist. Kang's endgame is to take the parts he likes from the universes he's destroyed and bring them together to form a new universe crafted in his own image. Now, how exactly was he going to achieve this? That is unknown. The popular theory is that he would also achieve this via the use of anchor beings. That if you bring an anchor being from one universe to another, he or she would inadvertently bring aspects of that universe with them. Similar to how the Marvel Netflix shows seem to have existed separately from the MCU until Daredevil started popping up in the MCU films and shows. Then suddenly, aspects and characters from his universe followed, and now we have a full-on MCU continuation of the Netflix Daredevil. But alas, that's just a theory, and a theory it remains. But it would still be really interesting if it turns out that Daredevil inexplicably moving from one franchise to another was actually part of Kang's experiments. Of course, in the end, the heroes would lose, and Kang would create Battle World a new universe in which Kang was always the ruler, and the setting for Avengers Secret Wars, where our heroes would engage in the ultimate battle to restore a semblance of the universe that they once knew. This would lead to a soft reboot of the MCU, with a new, cleaner continuity. And now for the second most important question of this video. Why didn't this happen? Well, the downfall of the Kang Dynasty actually started with the beta test. You see, before fully committing to Kang being the big bad of the multiverse saga, they decided to test the character out, and hastily made him the villain of the initially unplanned Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. That's right, Ant-Man 3 was originally not part of their release slate. They abruptly put it into production due to fan demand, and rushed it into principal photography at the exact same time as Thor Love and Thunder and the Marvels. Which explains why those three movies have extremely similar issues, but that's another story. Speaking as someone who's within the minority of people who actually enjoy Quantumania, even I question the logic behind taking the character that they intended to make the big bad for the entire multiverse saga a character who in the comics can take on all of the Avengers alone and show that character being defeated by three superheroes, their family, and a bunch of ants in his first appearance. Suffice it to say, Quantum Mania would go on to severely underperform at the box office, and the MCU crew would immediately start to shift gears and have Doctor Doom be the secret big bad of the multiverse saga, and basically have Kang be the Loki to Doom's Thanos. Yes, even back then, Doom was already Plan B. The new plan, as established by Quantumania's post credit scene, was to have Kang's variants pop up in the next few movies, have the Conqueror return in the Kang Dynasty, and at the end of that movie, he would be betrayed by Doom. Similar to how in the original 1984 Secret Wars, Kang tries to usurp Doom, and and Doom just casually orders Ultron to kill him off, and then takes over as the main villain of the comic. Unfortunately, Plan B also had to be abandoned after very serious allegations were made against Jonathan Majors, which led to his arrest, which then led to him being fired by Disney. 
And so they shifted to plan C, which was to simply have Doom be the big bad for the entire saga, which they officially confirmed at San Diego Comic Con 2024, revealing that Avengers 5 would be titled Avengers Doomsday and that Doctor Doom would be played by none other than Robert Downey Jr. Which is a casting that's the kind of multiversal insanity that I love and I can't wait to see it. Now, as far as Doom being the big bad for the entire saga, as much as I sympathize with Marvel Studios getting behind Jonathan Major's talent, if their intent was to make a saga about the multiverse, let alone one that is based on Secret Wars, then Doctor Doom should have been their first and only choice as the big bad, as he is the only villain power mad and vain enough to want to reshape the universe in his image. But more importantly, he is the main villain of both the original 1984 Secret Wars as well as the 2015 version which is allegedly the one Marvel Studios intends to adapt into Avengers Secret Wars. He's just the obvious choice. If this was supposed to be a time travel saga, then yes, Kang would have been the better choice for the big bad. Alas, with Joe and Anthony Russo set to direct Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars, we can at least rest assured that no matter what happens, those movies are gonna be freaking epic. But what do you think? Are you happy with the MCU shifting their plans to be more comic book accurate? Or would you still like to see the Kang Dynasty? Feel free to respectfully voice your opinion in the comment section below, as we have once again reached the end of this video. So, do you know of any fanboy films or shows that almost happened? Feel free to let me know at erod at inbox.com. And who knows? Your suggestion might just end up being the topic of the next Legends of Fandom. Until next time, I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster.